Hey guys, welcome back. Can the market be wrong? Isn't the market always right? You know, we have these seemingly contradictory statements, and sometimes I'll say things like, the market is telling us that this is a good set. But then I'll also say things like, the market is mispricing this box. And it creates this kind of contradiction where it's like, on the one hand, we assume that the market always has things correct, and on the other hand, we'll accuse the market of having things wrong. So how, how can we claim that because the market says so, it must be so, but also that the market can sometimes be wrong? We have to talk about first what a market is. Most abstractly, a market is where buyers and sellers come together to exchange things and thus discover the price of those things. In a stock market, the price quoted for a stock is the last price at which the sale was consummated. Uh, the quoted price is the most accurate measure of what the current real value is because it's the price that the last transaction happened at. On the TCG markets, like TCG Player as one of them, the quoted price is the current lowest ask price from a seller. So the lowest of all the sellers and what each individual one of them puts up their, their uh, box for, for instance. So if transactions are happening often enough, then the current TCG player price is probably going to be pretty good approximation of the current real value. And most of that holds for eBay too, with a little bit of nuance because eBay is not really uh, good at showing you all the prices of the same product. It's okay at that, but not great. And then there will also be complications like when you buy you know, four or more boxes and you get a, a discount on it because the seller is, is able to ship it more economically. So what do we do if the product is not moving very fast? You know, we go to a marketplace and we look at the prices, but we see that no sales have happened in a while. Well, if there's a lot of product for sale, but there's not much volume of sales, then the quoted price is probably not reflective of the true value. Probably the price is too high and the value in the eyes of the market have gone down. So if there's a little for sale and there's little volume, then the quoted price might still be reflective of the true value. And maybe an example of this would be a Black Lotus. I bet you can go on TCG Player right now. There's probably a one or two Black Lotuses for sale. They're probably somewhere near $30,000. But it's probably been a little while since one, one sold on TCG Player. So you have very low volume, but you also don't have many for sale. And so um, maybe those prices of, I don't know, let's make up a number, $27,000, maybe that's a good price for it. And if you have lots for sale and really high volume, so there's a there's a bunch of them out there and they're selling, selling really fast, then maybe that quoted price is too low. So the price is reflective of the current state of the market. And in that sense, it's always correct. Prices always objectively tell you what the market participants' current subjective opinions about the product are. Better than any screeching post on Reddit, what people are doing with their money in their wallets always betrays their true convictions. And so people may claim that they feel some way about something or they, they think something will happen in the future and they may talk a good game, but what they really open their wallets for is what matters. And that's why looking at those market prices is important. So remember, all of these things are just opinions, right? So somebody will say, I'm gonna, going to buy this box at this price because in my opinion, that's a good value. So those are just opinions and those can change with new information. The value is subjective and intrinsic value doesn't really exist. That's a whole nother video. But my opinion a month ago was that buying Baldur's Gate collector boxes at $232 each was a screaming deal. Uh, you know, I've kind of changed that opinion right now because I can look out at the market today and I can see that they're $218. So it really wasn't a screaming deal when I bought them for $232, but we only know that in retrospect. So some people will kind of get in this situation where they think that a market price is different from what they believe that it should be and that the market must then be manipulated. And it's really weird because you see this with people who like investing in gold. Like gold investors have built this really strong reputation for always crying manipulation about the price of gold. And it's really weird because they insist on continuing to invest in an asset they think is heavily manipulated 
and disconnected from its real value. I guess that's a whole nother video on its own also. So there's this second aspect of markets that can be incorrect, and that's what price the market is currently assigning to an asset compared to what it should be. And we necessarily get into some difficult ground here because should be is subjective. When I say the market is mispricing this, it's my opinion. The price the market has set is the price it has set. That is correct. But then I can think that that price that it has set is not good. It's not a correct price. So when we see things like jumpstart boxes at $85 that have over $100 of EV, then in my opinion, it's underpriced and the market is getting it wrong. It's correct that $85 is the objective real price of buying this box today. You can go on eBay, eBay right now and you can buy it for $85. That's, that's objectively true, but the uh, EV of the box is over 100. And so the market is mispricing it. So it's accurate to say that it's $85 it's also accurate to say that it's mispriced. So to go back to the Baldur's Gate example, today the market is telling us that the current value is about $218 for this box. I think that's way too low. I think from a year, a year from now, we'll all be wishing we'd bought more today at 218. But why does that happen? Why is the TCG sealed product market not more forward looking like the stock market is? It's because at different times in a product's life, different groups of people are the primary drivers of the price. So you can imagine that during pre-release and for maybe say the first month after release of a product, the product's price is primarily determined by WOTC, local card stores, players, and collectors, okay? They're the drivers of supply and demand and thus prices during that time. The card stores have this business model based around turning product over and over. They aren't really worried about what the long-term forward-looking value of a product might be. They're interested in making their profit on today's sale and then ordering more product from their distributors to sell for a profit again tomorrow. But after that initial period, once players and collectors have bought most of what they'll ever buy, then WOTC, LGSs, and investors become the primary drivers of supply and demand. So WOTC will decide when and how big the subsequent release waves are and whether or not and how much to reprint. LGSs will keep making attempts to turn product quickly, but there are fewer buyers. And investors will be deciding how much they're going to put back in their closet now that they know more about what's in the set. So you've shifted away from the collectors and players. And that's going to go on for a while until the set goes out of print, at which point WOTC is out of the game, LGSs are winding down their positions for the most part, and the long-term value of products is mostly in the hands of the investors. And that's when prices can truly start to become forward-looking like stock market prices are, because there won't be any more reprints or restock waves. We know at that point that the quantity of boxes only goes down over time. So early in a product's life, the market can resist being forward-looking, and thus the price of a product can greatly differ from its eventual long-term value. The market can be wrong. Okay, so let me know what you think. I've thought about this a lot, and I think this explanation covers the various statements we find ourselves making about the market being correct and also being wrong. Um, like, comment, share, and subscribe. Join me on Final Trade. Thanks a lot.